Hello Houston, this is Jason Hammond, the Science Outreach Manager and Life Science Educator here at the Children's Museum Houston. Today I'm going to do a story time for you called Stone Soup. And this is being brought to you by the Pi Beta Phi Foundation Houston with permission of Simon & Schuster. I remember my mom reading this book to me when I was a kid and really, really loving it. And I, I decided at one point I was going to read it to myself. It was one of the first books I learned how to read on. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and read this story to you. Three soldiers trudged down a road in a strange country. They were on their way home from the wars. Besides being tired, they were hungry. In fact, they had eaten nothing for two days. So here's our three hungry soldiers in the forest. How I would like a good dinner tonight, said the first, and a bed to sleep in, said the second. But that is impossible, said the third. We must march on. On they marched. Suddenly ahead of them, they saw the lights of a village. Maybe we'll find a bite to eat there, said the first, and a loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of that place feared strangers. When they heard that there were soldiers coming down the road, they talked among themselves. So here they are getting all excited because there's a village not too far from them. How come three soldiers? Soldiers are always hungry, but we have little enough for ourselves. And they hurry to, fight, to hide their food. They push sacks of barley under the hay in the lots. They lower buckets of milk down the wells. So a lot of you may not know what barley is, but it's something that's used to make bread at times. So they're putting the barley up and they're gonna hide their milk in the wells. And there's a, cat, there's a hungry cat right there. They spread old quilts over the carrot bins. They hid their cabbages and potatoes under the beds. They hung their meat in the cellars. They hid all they had to eat, then they waited. So see them hiding all their food because they don't want the soldiers to eat it. They want the food for themselves. The soldiers stopped first at the house of Paul and Francois. Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for three hungry soldiers? We have had no food ourselves for three days, said Paul. Francois made a sad face, and you can see she's making her sad face. It has been a poor harvest. So the soldiers look a little dejected right now, a little sad. The three soldiers went on to the house of Albert and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food and have you some corner where we could sleep for the night? Oh no, said Albert. We gave all we could spare the soldiers who came before you. Our beds are full, said Louise. So no one's letting them in. Everyone's saying no. The chickens and cats have a place to sleep, but the soldiers don't. At Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It had been a poor harvest and the grain must be kept for seed. So it went all through the village. Not a peasant had any food to give away. They all had good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed. Another had an old sick father to care for. All had too many mouths to fill. So you see, you know, they gotta take care of this old man over here. A lot of kids here that need to eat. It's not that they're being mean, they just are being safe. The villagers stood in the street and sighed. They looked as hungry as they could. The three soldiers talked together. So here's the villagers looking all sad. Here's the soldiers. Looks like they're coming up with an idea. Then the first soldier called out, Good people, the peasants drew near. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food and you have no food. Well then, we'll have to make stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup? That would be something to know about. So they're pretty excited looking over here. First, we'll need a large iron pot, the soldiers said. The peasants bought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? So here's the big stone pot, and here they are building a fire. so They can boil water and cook the food, the stones. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square, and the pot was set to boil. So here they are bringing the water. The soldiers are over here making the fire and setting it to boil. And now, if you please, three round, smooth stones. Those were easy enough to find. The peasants, grew round, the peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. So here they are bringing the stones, and they're getting really interested in what this stone soup could be. 
Any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Here they go, getting the salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup, but oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francois, and off she ran. She came back with an apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt. So there she went and got the carrots. A good stone soup should have cabbage, said the soldiers as they sliced the carrots into the pot. But no, use asking for what you don't have. I think it's really hilarious that they're slicing their carrots with swords. I think that's funny. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbage from the cupboard under the bed. So you see what they're doing? They're trying to trick them, but also help feed them by helping them make this soup. But now they're bringing all their food over. So here they come with the cabbages. If only we had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table. The peasants thought that over. They remembered their potatoes and the sides of beef hanging in the cellars. They ran to fetch them. A rich man's soup, all from a few stones? It seemed like magic. Ah, said the soldiers as they stirred in the beef and potatoes. If only we, we had a little barley and a cup of milk. This soup would be fit for the king himself. Indeed, he asked for such a soup when last he dined with us. The peasants looked at each other. The soldiers had entertained the king well. But no use asking for what you don't have, the soldiers sighed. The peasants brought their barley from the lots. They brought their milk from the wells. The soldiers stirred the barley and milk into the steaming broth while the, parents, while the peasants stared. At last, the soup was ready. All of you shall taste, the soldiers said, but first a table must be set. Great tables were placed in the square, and all around were lighted torches. Such a soup, how good it smelled, truly fit for a king. But then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread, and a roast, and cider? Soon a banquet was spread, and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast. Never had the peasants tasted such soup. And fancy, made from stones. They ate and drank and ate and drank, and after that they danced. They danced and sang far into the night. At last they were tired. Then the three soldiers asked, Is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let Three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft? Indeed, they must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier slept in the priest's house, the second soldier slept in the baker's house, and the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send-off. Many thanks for what you have taught us, the peasants said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now that we know how to make soup from stones. Oh, it's all in knowing how, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. Such men don't grow on every bush. And that's the story. Now you can see what happened there. The soldiers tricked them into making soup, but it also gave them a sense of good feeling for themselves that they can make the soup in the future and they can help other people out. So there is a nice little lesson embedded in there. With that, I am going to say farewell to you all. Once again, I am Jason from the Children's Museum of Houston. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.